to Art with Anna. Um, today we are going to have a lot of fun focusing on an artist and two of his works, but it's going to be kind of part of a series. So this whole month of May we are going to focus on the subject of joy. Um, and this week we're going to focus a little bit on Vincent van Gogh. So it is tulip time in Holland, Michigan. We are celebrating Dutch culture, so we will focus also on a Dutch artist. So. Vincent van Gogh um, is the person we're focusing on. We're gonna jump in again, and I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need for our first project. Okay, so we are gonna need white paint, yellow paint, orange paint, green paint, purple paint, pink paint, black paint. You'll need a dish for water. You'll also need some Q-tips and a paintbrush, some green paper, You'll need some orange paper, and last but not least, you will need some yellow paper. Okay, so while you are gathering your supplies, we'll talk a little bit about why we chose the subject of joy for this month of May. Now, um, at Benjamin Tope, we're hoping that we will all be able to gather for church sometime this summer, hopefully sooner than later. Um, and our pastor came up with the idea of maybe having an art show with all of our art um, for the first church service back. So um, for the month of May, we're going to focus on making some pieces of art that remind us of joy. And then when we're done, we can all um, gather them and they can all be pieces of art in our art show whenever the first day of church ends up being. So that is why we chose Joy. Now, I chose Vincent van Gogh because he's Dutch and it's tulip time, but also he did a bunch of paintings of flowers and he chose them because they brought him joy. So the first one we are going to focus on, I am going to bring up right here. All right, so this painting is called The Oleanders. Um, it is a painting of flowers. Oleanders are flowers, a type of flower. Um um, and that's what's pictured here. But if you'll see on the table, there's also a book. And the book is titled uh, Joy de Verve which I know I'm pronouncing wrong, I can't do French, but it means essentially like the zest of life or the joy that you find in life. Now in that book, it's actually a very sad book. So the title is ironic. It's actually a book about a child that loses their parents. No joy at all in that life. Vincent van Gogh is kind of poking, maybe not fun at the book, but um, he is kind of countering that author and saying, that there is joy in life, and he's representing that joy by these flowers. So we're gonna recreate that today, um, but I do encourage you, in addition to what we do today, to make some art about different subjects that bring you joy. And that could be any type of art. It doesn't have to be visual art. It could be performance art. Um, it could be three-dimensional art. We will focus on one of those this um, month, but um, it can be off of what we're doing here today. This is just an example and something to inspire you to create even more art moving forward. So let's dive in. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take our green sheet of paper, which is gonna be the background. Um, and you know what, we're also gonna need some scissors, which I didn't put out before. Um, but we are also gonna to wanna to take an orange sheet of paper and kind of decide where our table is gonna be on our piece of paper. We're gonna want it about a third of the way up. A lot of art works in thirds. Um, usually there's either like two thirds of space and one third of something else or the opposite, right? But usually a lot of times you'll see that art is um, built in thirds. So we're gonna do the same, make our table about a third of the way up. Um, I'm going to make a mark. This is kind of how big I want our table to be. And I'm gonna cut it out. Okay. 
All right, so I have our table. We have our background. The yellow is simply for the books. Um, so I'm just gonna cut out some smaller rectangles for that. They do not have to be perfect. So um, Van Gogh is part of the post-impressionist movement. And in this movement, artists really like to play with angles. They weren't always right. Um, a good example of that actually is Vincent Van Gogh's bedroom painting. So we look at that, the angles on this are very strange, right? We're looking at something and none of it really adds up. Nothing quite looks right. So um, this painting looks a little bit more realistic. Um, but the books are kind of funky on the table, so essentially this will be our setup where we have our background, we have paper here, paper here to represent our table, background, and books. Now the main part of our painting is a uh, vase with flowers, right? So I'm actually going to use the rest of our yellow for something in a little bit. Um, and we're also just going to use leftover of another piece of paper to make a vase. So I am going to rip this piece of paper. I just wanted a little rectangle. I could have cut it easily. But I'm going to fold it in half. Um, I'm actually going to do it inside out because I'm going to make a pen line to make a vase. I'm going to fold it in half just so we make half a vase shape. And when we cut it out, it'll be perfectly symmetrical. It's not easy to do um, eyeballing it. so. Do that, come in and out. So this is our half of our vase and we're gonna cut it out and open it up and we will have a full vase. And voila, a little vase to go on top of our table. Um, all right, so the next thing is going to be to paint our table. Now, I chose orange for our table, and that's because if we look at that painting again, the outline of the table is actually an orange color, um, but the main of the table is kind of shades of purple. Now, you'll notice on my palette, I had to make my own color purple. I didn't have purple, um, and actually the pink that I did have was only a neon pink, and I wanted it a little bit lighter, but I did want to mention that pretty much if you have red, yellow and blue, those three um, primary colors, you can mix almost every color. And if you add white and black to that, you can mix almost any value um, of that color. So I did mix my own purple here. Something I noticed on the painting was in the top left, there's kind of a darker purple section that's supposed to represent some um, shadow. And then on the other side, it's more of a lighter, almost white. So what we're gonna do right now is take some darker purple. We're gonna put it just blobs in the section in the top. So we have kind of a dark purple um, section kind of going up here. We want it in this corner. I'm gonna clean off my brush and my water. And then we're gonna add some white. And my brush is not perfectly cleaned off. And that's so our white has um, some hint of purple to it. I'm actually just gonna add a little bit more. All right, so we have some color on our paper, but it's nothing exciting, <laughs> just blobs. Um, so as I mentioned before, Van Gogh is part of the post-impressionist movement. And post means after, right? So it was after the um, Impressionist movement. Now the Impressionists um, really focused on really quick brush strokes. They cared really a lot about being kind of in the moment. And their main goal was to really um, express light as it was happening. So light changes all the time, right? I know in half my videos, I have a lot of problem with light because I don't have a lot of natural light in my apartment. And then um, we don't have great lighting in the room that I'm in. So I always have problem with light and it's always changing. So the impressionists cared about doing really quick paintings that represented light in that moment. 
A great example of this is Monet. He did the same a painting of the same church over and over, but it looks completely different because he did it at different times of day, um, just showing how the light changed. Now, post-impressionists, Van Gogh, they said, sure, we like that you focus on um, not perfect brush strokes, but we don't care about it necessarily being in the moment, and we're going to explore more about color. Um, so that's kind of Van, how Van Gogh got started with his style. You'll notice a lot of his brush strokes are very deliberate but short, and that's why we have our Q-tips. Um, they kind of make it easy because it doesn't spread like a paintbrush, so your lines are really exact. So I'm going to take my paint, put it on my Q-tip, and we are going to make very exact, quick still, um, and short brush strokes. And we'll probably need more paint for this over here. But we do want it to kind of connect in the middle and then become more light over here to an almost white. So I will let you guys get started on that. I'll give you a little zoom in to what I'm doing. And in the middle, they're gonna kind of blend. We'll blend these a little bit in here. So let's get started with that. Let's cover our whole orange piece of paper in this kind of purple gradient from dark to light. All right, so um, this is kind of, this is what mine turned out to look like. And it's okay to have orange on the edges. Um, that's, that's how Van Gogh's painting looks too. So another key component of impression, post-impressionism is taking color and using it differently than it might be. Um, and we talked a little bit about that with Kandinsky. So similar, he's, we're thinking maybe this table really wasn't white and purple. Maybe it, when he was painting it, it was really a brown table. Um, so you can take things and, and alter their color to make a mood. Um, this painting is very brightly colored and that's supposed to represent joy, so that was intentional. Um, but something Van Gogh does a lot is put complementary colors right next to each other. So we do have this kind of purpley table. Well, right on top of it is its complementary colors. Um, yellow. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. So the books on top of the purple table complementary colors playing off of each other. And then also green's complementary color is um, red. And instead of red, he does use pink for the flowers, but pink is really just light red, right? <laughs> so we have light red on a light green. Those are kind of a juxtaposition also. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna do the same style of brush stroke on our books. Um, one of our books is gonna be darker though. It sits underneath. It's also showing shadow, right? So it's gonna be a little bit of a a darker yellow, so if we want to add a little bit of black or purple um, to one of our yellows, or even red if you want to make it kind of more of an orange, just change the color of your yellow a little bit um, to make it darker. You'll want one like that. And then the other book, you're going to want a light yellow, but you're going to want just the edge a little bit darker. And that is because that is where the book is bound. So I'm going to make that edge a little bit darker. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. That's a little too dark for me. But, and then the rest of it will be light. So let's get started with that. So that's our underneath book, and now we have this book, which I really do want to keep a pretty light yellow. Put light yellow on there. I actually, add some white too. And we'll do some quick strokes of that. All right. So we have our top book, the Joie de Verve on top of our darker book. All right, so this is our work of art so far. We have our table, we have our books. Um, we do have our base. 
I do think this vase that I made um, is a little too small, so I actually think I'm going to make a bigger one. And then we'll talk about how we're going to make our leaves. So stay tuned. All right, so I have my bigger vase. Um, in the painting, the topper part of it is kind of a darker blue, um, and the bottom part is a lighter blue, so you can feel free to paint it that. I am going to do something like that make kind of a cool dark color and paint the top, make it even darker. All right, and I'm gonna add a lot of white to a little bit of that to make the bottom part. Now I am using a paintbrush to make these short lines just because I just m mixed up the color with the paintbrush, but you can still um, use the Q-tips to make those short brush strokes. All right, so I have my vase here. Now our next thing is just to make the flowers and the leaves. So we're gonna take our Q-tip, we're gonna place it in green paint and all we're gonna do is make some leaves. We know our vase is gonna be around here, so I'm actually just gonna move it. And the leaves on this plant are quite thin and long, so I am just pressing my Q-tip down and then pulling away, and as I pull away, I'm pulling up a little bit. Um, and then I'll go through, kind of try to make the ends a little pointer, but essentially just going through and making lines with my Q-tip. And our next step is to make flowers. So now we have kind of a base of, um, we got our base there, and then we have a base of leaves, and on top of that, we're gonna add our flowers. So this is a lot like, how you would actually do a flower arrangement. You would wanna build a base of greens and then on top of it, you'd put your flowers. But how we're gonna do our flowers today is going to be a little bit different. So we are going to take some leftover paper. I have some leftover yellow and I am going just to rip and tear some kind of round circular shapes that are gonna be our flowers. And you can see that this is how my flowers are going to look on our painting. Now these flowers are yellow and that's not what I want. I want our flowers to be pink so I am going to simply do the same technique. We're going to do quick brush strokes that are kind of defined um, and we're going to do it with the pink. Alright so I'm taking pink and using my q-tip and I'm taking this, this general color pink that I made and just going kind of in a circular motion, but still um, clean brush strokes that are defined. And I'm just kind of going in a circle. So these defined brush strokes don't have to be straight. Um, you can really see that in Van Gogh's Starry Night. He has very defined brush strokes, but they're all swirls. That painting is very swirled. Um, and we're doing a similar thing right now with our flowers. We want to kind of go around with our brush stroke. All right, so there is a flower. Now our last step is really just to paste it all together. So I've got some glue and I'm going to glue it all down and it will make our final product. So let's do that. And there we have our final product. All right, so lastly, what we're gonna do for today is one more project, um, very similar to the last one actually, also by Van Gogh and also of flowers, but we're actually going to do one of his paintings called
sunflowers. So he did many, many paintings of sunflowers. I don't know the exact amount, um, but he did quite a few. The first round of sunflowers that he painted were all laying down um, on a table. A few years later, he did another round of paintings of sunflowers. This time they were all in vases and started with just three in a vase. I think it got to end up, I think he ended with um, 14 flowers in a vase in some of his later paintings of that work. And then the next year he just recreated, repainted a lot of the second round of paintings. <laughs> He's just done it a lot. Um, and he did write that um, to him, sunflowers represented gratitude. So I think gratitude is something to be joyful about. I think you have to be joyful to have gratitude, so maybe loosely, but I think it fits in our theme. Um, so he actually a few of his paintings ended up in the home of his friend um, Paul Gugan, Gugan. I know I'm saying that wrong too. I can't say French names, but Paul Gugan, um, who is also a post-impressionist painter. So here's some examples of Paul Gugan's paintings right here. So um, they represented gratitude, as we said, he gave a few to his friend. Um, his dream was to have a studio that was just covered in what he said looked like a candelabra of all these paintings of yellow, um, almost flame-like sunflowers. So I think that's pretty cool. It's definitely something Van Gogh is super known for. Um, and we are gonna recreate one of them today. And one of the ones that I think is kind of more brightly colored and maybe the most joyful. So let's get started. All right, what we'll need for our last project is brown and blue paper, a pen, uh, scissors. We're gonna also need actually some glue. The colors of paint you'll need are orange, yellow, green, and blue. We'll need more of our Q-tips and a dish of water. And that should do it for what we need for our last Van Gogh Joy project. Okay, so I am going to work on gluing whenever the glue Pour to the bottom so I can actually get it out. I'm going to glue um, the table piece to the background. And then I'm also going to, the next step will be to cut three different size circles to be the centers of our sunflowers. So we're gonna need kind of a big circle, um, a medium circle and a small circle. So I'm just gonna draw those out so you can see. All right, so we want kind of a small circle, a medium circle, and then quite a large circle. So we want those, we're gonna cut those out to be the centers of our sunflowers. And they don't have to be perfect because centers of flowers aren't really perfect either. Very rare that nature is totally perfect. have all the pieces that we need. The next um, part is simply going to be to apply paint. So let's look at that. Now we have this brown piece that will be our table and I think we're almost there with the glue. Yep it did it. All right just gonna glue this down at the bottom and we're gonna get to painting. So like we said before Van Gogh kind of has a signature style of painting. He uses kind of distinct, separate brush strokes. So for the table, he um, chooses to highlight different aspects of the table. So he adds different colors to make it, I think, just more interesting. So I'm going to take our kind of orangey color and mix it with our yellow, and I'm gonna put in just some little streaks of color there. I'm gonna do just yellow, highlight it up a little bit. Um, and he does this also down here is some lighter color like this. And then the back is more of just a brown. <laughs> All 
All right, and then in the center is gonna be the vase. Um, and he's got some like yellow throughout there, but then he also has the blue, I think kind of acting as somewhat of a shadow. So we are gonna go in with our blue and put some blue bits around here. I have some scrap paper left over, so I am going to make, um, again, a vase out of a separate sheet of paper. So I'm going to just cut out a vase shape, and I fold it in half so it'll be symmetrical. This vase that he uses is kind of bulbous, so we're going to kind of make ours similarly bulbous. This one, maybe too bulbous. Cut it down a little bit. There we are. So that's going to be our vase. Now our vase in the painting is white on bottom with some green on top. So I am going to mimic that. Now this is a still life. So he did have some sunflowers in front of him that he was actually painting from. So we're not doing that right now. It's not really sunflower season. That's in the fall. Um, but we have our vase. Stick my vase right there. Bring it down lower so we have some spots for our sunflowers. Now comes the part where we get to choose kind of where our sunflowers are going to sit on the page. Um, he has one sunflower that um, is a little diff different than their typical sunflower. It's a little more of like a pom-pom style really down there. He has his biggest one right here and then he's got kind of a medium sized one that's extra tall though up here. So I'm going to follow a similar pattern and do the same. Um, but on each of these circles, he also chooses to show some dimension by color. So our biggest circle is mostly kind of a, like a brown yellow with a dark center um, to it. So I'm going to take some of our orange mixed with green and make just kind of a dark center there with our short brush strokes. Most of the medium one, the outside and the center, are this dark color. So we're going to do the same. Mix this color up. And we're going to go around the outside. Kind of with two layers of this darker color. If you just have brown and you don't want to mix your own, that is totally fine. I just did not have brown, so we're going to do some in the middle there. And then our smallest one is mostly the dark brown color. So take that, grab some color, and short brush stroke around, get this darker brown color. All right, now the rest of um, the centers are just a lighter, like, orangey, yellowy brown, so we're gonna go in throughout like that. Fill that in, and then most of this is also that color. <laughs> two of them and then our smallest one is just fully dark brown so there's that you can kind of see it all right so we are gonna position our sunflower centers where we'd like them um, and also paste them down as well as pacing down pasting down our um, our base So there is our project so far. Looks about like that. So now we have the center of our, center of our flowers. The next thing we're going to do is take yellow and we're going to take the yellow paint and give our sunflowers different leaves. So this sunflower down here is kind of pom pom it's kind of fringy so they'll just be short little leaves all over it. The ones up here more have a kind of typical sunflower leaf so um, 
I might use paint brushes for that because they'll need to be a little bit bigger. So let's start with this one with our Q-tip in some yellow and let's make some sunflower leaves. Now you can do just plain yellow, but you can also add some white to the yellow to give it a little bit of dimension if you'd like. So you can have some that are lighter, lighter leaves and some that are darker leaves. So I'm going to mix together a little bit of a lighter color. We're going to do that first. We're just going to paint some leaves on here. Really short ones is all I'm doing, short strokes. And I did kind of one layer around and now I'm going around um, and doing another layer. Keep doing that on top of each one. So I'll probably end up doing kind of like five rows of these little leaves. By leaves, I mean petals. <laughs> Our first sunflower is about complete. So you can see I've just done really really short little bits on here and then um, just layered them on top of each other further and further apart. Alright so our next one we're gonna do a little bit different. Um, we're still gonna use our yellows um, but we are gonna use a paintbrush so I'm gonna get mine clean here in the water. and get some yellow loaded up on my paintbrush and I am going to do one stroke and two strokes. I get a little bit closer so you guys can actually see. So I am just taking this and kind of going up and in and then on the other side out and in to make a petal shape. And I, again I'm going to layer different colors and I'll do a first row and then probably a second row of these two to build that one up. And then we won't forget about, we'll do this, a similar thing um, to this one right up here because these two are about the same style of um, sunflower and this one's a different uh, variety. All right, so we have our first two sunflowers and I'm gonna go and get this guy um, right up here next. All right, so I finished with my sunflowers and I'm pretty happy with them. Um, next thing to do is to add a stem going from this um, tall one down to between the two other sunflowers and then we're gonna add some leaves. And then from there we can pretty much call it a masterpiece, call it a Van Gogh. All right, so I'm gonna go in with some green some medium color green, add a stem that goes down, and then we're going to add some leaves. I'm going to add some dark bits and some light, light bits, so add a leaf that comes down here, a leaf come up here. You have to be creative, this is your own painting. I know we are styling it and mimicking it after um, Van Gogh's, but it's still your own rendition, so. All right, I'm gonna add some darker green. Go through and put some darker bits of the leaves on, and then I think we can call it done. And just like that, we have a masterpiece that looks a little bit like a Van Gogh and can bring us a little bit of joy and also um, represents gratitude. So there's that. Um, 
as a last note, I just want to encourage everyone to make some art and um, think about things that bring you joy, think about colors that bring you joy, and put those together to make something um, that you think represents joy to you. And then whenever we can all gather, um, we'll put them on display and we'll have a little bit of an art show. And I can't wait to see what you guys did. Uh, I hope this inspired you to make some fun art of your own. And as always, send me what you made so I get to see it because it's my favorite part. And I will see you guys next week with another art um, specifically titled Joie de Verve, which again, sorry about the pronunciation, um, but um, the joy of, joy of life or zest of life. So that is that. I'll see you guys next week with a new artist. Same theme. Okay, bye.